look at the number one thing that he's going to be measured by, it's this economy, and that is where he gets a failing mark. Welcome back to Our World with Black Enterprise. The 2012 presidential elections are right around the corner. We sit down with a panel of Republicans who cast their ballot on how it'll play out. Joining me are Lenny McAllister, senior contributor to Politic 365, Marsha White, who's a project manager and senior consultant, and Gary Rogier, senior vice president of Ariel Investments. Thank you all so much for being here. Lenny, I'm going to start with you. This is an interesting moment. Uh, it's not official yet, but Mitt Romney is, for all intents and purposes, the Republican nominee for president. How does that make you feel? How, how do you think about that nomination? You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a mix, because Romney wasn't necessarily saying the types of things that African-American Republicans really liked during the primary process. If you look at some of the things that Newt Gingrich said or Rick Santorum, they, they stepped in some holes there, but they also tried to at least address some of the issues that African-American voters needed to have addressed in regards to schools, in regards to jobs and the like. What are the... Back with a great power panel for you guys. Cliff Schechter is the president of uh, the firm Libertas, and he's the author of The Real McCain. Uh, Lenny McAllister is a political strategist and commentator and a good friend on the right. Uh, good to have his presence here on the Young Turks as well. Um, now, topic number one is Obama too busy for Wisconsin. Uh, he was giving eight different interviews in six different swing states, and uh, here he is at WBAY in Green Bay. Let's listen. There are a lot of Democrats in the state who have told me they're upset you did not come to the state and campaign for Tom Barrett. Well, you, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that as president of the United States, I've got a lot of responsibilities. Uh, I was supportive of Tom and uh, have been supportive of Tom. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I would love to have seen a different result. All right, Cliff, let me start with you. Are you buying it? He was just simply too busy to show up in Wisconsin? No, I'm not buying it at all. I mean, too busy. This is the second most important election of this year for the Democrats. It wasn't, and it wasn't just his schedule. The Democratic Party, the DNC, Obama, they didn't put money in the way the right did so that Barrett was outspent like eight to one. Um, you know, the, I, I just, I don't understand the long-term thinking. It just seems to be whenever there's a risk, whether, you know, it's, whether you have to, when he has to fight for something, the president will back away from that fight, you know, and, and this just reminds me too much of that. Lenny, it's interesting that he has time to do eight interviews right after the election, including one in Wisconsin, and he didn't have any uh, time to send out anything but a tweet. Is, is Cliff right? Was he just scared of the political ramifications if Barrett lost? It sounds an awful lot like 2009 in Virginia. It sounds an awful lot like the senatorial race here in Illinois for his old Senate seat. He backs away when, it, when there's the risk of being tied to a loser. And that's unfortunate because he doesn't show folks that he's willing to be your friend for thick or for thin. And he was supposed to be a different type of politician. And I hope that this doesn't bite him in 2012 in November. It might not bite him in Wisconsin, but it might bite him in other swing states. Uh, I think you guys are entirely right. someone up who is uniquely... Pick any other Republican in the country. He is the worst Republican in the country to put up against Barack Obama. Why would Wisconsin want to vote for someone like that? Ouch. Uh, at first we thought, whoa, that sounded pretty strident. But then we just heard him minutes ago on the steps of the Supreme Court saying he is the worst person to make that case. The worst person to make that case is Mitt Romney. Lenny, I'm going to let you weigh in on this. Is this because it's exciting and because it's timely? Or is Rick Santorum uh, sounding desperate? Rick Santorum's not sounding desperate and it's not timely, but Rick Santorum has a tendency to go over the top. This is not the first time that Senator Santorum has said something that has a good point to it, but is articulated and messaged all the wrong way. Let's go back to the JFK speech. He believes in not separating church and state when it comes to a leader's perspective on the world, but by saying that the JFK speech made him want to throw up was going overboard. Some of the comments that he said about African Americans wanting to close the disparities when it comes to employment. Great point. Not when you say you want to give black people jobs, not other people's money. This is not the first time that Senator Santorum has done this, and he's been doing it throughout the campaign. The problem is when you're the front runner, it exponentially gets worse when you continue to do these things. It's just another example of Santorum not having the discipline and messaging that his supporters would like for him to have. And this is one of the things that contrasts him with Mitt Romney, who 
although he's had his own gaffes, hasn't quite been this far off the rails with some of the messages okay. that he's put out there. So, so just so it's fresh in our minds, what he said in that soundbite that, that I just played was pick any other Republican in the country. He is the worst Republican in the country to put up against Barack Obama. This is a part of the show where we go to the heart of the political debate, where all sides are fair game. We're just a day away from the Michigan and Arizona primaries, and it looks like just a two-man race in both. Winning these two contests could also set the table for a big Super Tuesday for either Mitt Romney or Rick Santorum. So joining me now is Republican analyst Lenny McAllister and Democratic political consultant Ed Espinoza. Okay, guys, both of these states look like dead heats, so why does it seem like Santorum and Romney are only focusing on Michigan, Ed? Well, Michigan is a proportional delegate allocation. Sorry, I got a little echo here, so I'm going to turn the volume down. Uh, Michigan is a, is a state that allocates its delegates on a proportional basis. Arizona's winner take all. Romney's going to win Arizona. The polls might be tightening up a little bit now in a couple of surveys, but these candidates have internal polling. They see the writing on the wall. They know what's going to happen, and Santorum's going to lose Arizona. It's not a good use of his campaign funds. So for them to have a real competition and to come out of this race with some delegates, they're going to take it to Michigan. Do you agree, Lenny? Uh, somewhat, but it, some of the things that Ed's missing is, number one, Michigan is part of that Midwest sweep that Santorum would love to have. You talk, you listen to what Rick Santorum says an awful lot. He talks about the Reagan Democrats. He's trying to be that person that gets the Reagan Democrats in the fall should he get the nomination. So what does he need? He needs Michigan. He needs Ohio, where he is up. He needs Pennsylvania, where he is up. He needs those type of states. He already has Missouri. He would like to get Indiana. If he can get the Midwest, couple that as a Christian conservative, conservative in the South, he can see how he can win the presidency in November. Arizona plays into that, but nowhere near as much as that Midwestern belt that he needs. That's why it's more important for Rick Santorum to win in Michigan tomorrow. Let's make a reconnection. Let's go back to the Republican primary in New Hampshire. Polls point to a Mitt Romney win, but Romney's rivals are not giving up. We have sorted out our technical issues, we hope. Republican analyst Lenny McAllister joins me now. He's a senior contributor to Politic 365 and host of the Internet radio program Get Right with Lenny McAllister. And Lenny McAllister joins me now live from Chicago. Lenny, what are Republicans looking for in a man? Unfortunately, it looks as though they're looking for a little bit of an amalgamation of all different types of characteristics from the different candidates in there. They're not settled on one candidate. It's Romney by default. Huntsman, if he had a little bit more personality. Ron Paul, based on his fiscal policies. Newt Gingrich, based on his historical perspective on things. And Rick Santorum, based on his Christian conservatism. And you just can't combine them all into one candidate. They were hoping that would be Rick Perry. He has floundered mightily. So... What you're going to find is a continuation of, of Romney being out front, people targeting Romney, and hopefully to these other candidates, they'll be able to chip away at his lead in South Carolina and in Florida. What is it that the voters, uh, I should say the Republicans who are voting in these primaries and caucuses and independents and those who have been polled, what is it that, that gives Romney the edge? Just experience. He's been running for president basically since 2007. He's raised an awful lot of money, and unlike the other candidates that have had flubs publicly when it comes to some missteps speaking, he hasn't had quite those same amounts of mistakes. People have already forgotten about the $10,000 bet that he made with Rick Perry because it's been so long ago. It's been three debates ago, and since then you've had Newt Gingrich make mistakes. You've had Rick Santorum make mistakes. You've had Herman Cain, who had dropped out basically around that time, and Michelle Bachman that has dropped out. So. Romney is able to keep the money and the early momentum and just kind of stay away from the pack. And as long as the other ones can't significantly chip away at that lead, he's going to have the money to go to distance. Yeah. Speaking of money, you know what I found really interesting? Vivian Novak from the Center for, uh, I think it's Responsive Politicians, says uh, as an extraordinarily large amount of money from Ron Paul comes from the grassroots. In other words, a $200 or less would be fair to say he's the people. People's choice? This, he, he could be shaping up to be that, but he's always had that niche of folks that have followed him throughout his career. The person that is trying to become the people's choice is Rick Santorum. 
Ron Paul, unlike, and I should say very much like Mitt Romney, already has his ceiling. The person that is expanding their ceiling and has already done it through Iowa is Rick Santorum. He's trying to fill that niche as being the people's candidate. It'll be interesting to see if he can do that, because if he can, you'll see his fundraising continue to go up and you'll see him continue to rise in the polls and solidify that number, too, particularly if he can do well in South Carolina heading into Florida. Other than the sweater vest.